Hi friends, welcome. Today I want to talk about the work of Bryce Waters. He is a Sydney-based street photographer, and he uses a style that a lot of people use. It's very stark and dramatic, and he uses a uh, very direct and harsh flash. A lot of street photographers like this style, and he does it in a way that is remarkable. He adds a level of finesse that I think a lot of other photographers kind of miss. Uh, very quickly, if you notice that my face is a little bit redder than normal, that's because I ran around in the sun yesterday. I was doing a video shoot, and I was the talent. And I realized at the end of the day, when I saw everybody around me, who also has similar skin complexion to me, uh, their faces had turned red, and then my wife looks at me and says, your face had turned red too. So, that's, I got a little bit of sunburn. I used some lavender and coconut oil. But anyway, let's talk about Bryce Waters. I'll link below to his things. I would encourage you to check him out. Let's look at his Instagram feed. Here we are. As we scroll through his feed together, you and I holding hands intimately, uh, you notice that he has a very harsh look to his work. Lots of flashes popping. Almost all of his photos have a flash that seems to be probably on top of his camera. And it creates this beautifully dramatic, bizarre look. And it accentuates this by shooting bizarre subjects. The content, uh, the content mirrors the uh, style that he's going after. And so if we go to the, his latest post, we see a photo of a man who is walking down the street. He has glasses on, big 70s-esque glasses, not tinted as many were in the 70s, but, you know, big nonetheless. He has a hat on, ACDC shirt, and what this flash does is it makes the background become very dark and the subject become dramatically and starkly lit due to the contrast that the flash creates. And the scene in the background is a little bit busy. You know, he has a red light coming out of his head. One thing that makes this really work in this case technically speaking, is because the background is so dark because of the flash being popped that you're able to focus in on the subject. It's interesting. A lot of people will use, like, uh, a lower f-stop, right? Drop it down to f1.8-ish, and that will blur out the background. And that's one way to create focus. Another way to create focus is to declutter the background. Well, another way to create focus is to pop a flash in a stranger's face unsuspectingly, and you get this look. And I I love I love his work in particular in an attempt to pull off this style because he has a, a wonderful handle on the subjects he's trying to take photos of and how he's going to take photos of them. He doesn't just pop a flash on somebody who's interesting and forget to pay attention to all the nuances that make a photo like this come together. He is intentional to put the subject in a place where their expression is compelling, where they are in a uh, proper place in the frame, in terms of composition, and where they are, of course, interesting inherently. He really it seems like it seems like he works hard to find truly interesting characters on the street, and I think that's fascinating. Um, so it, the the this shot becomes about this guy and his his interestingness, with the background being a context point, and the separation that is created through using the flash between him and the background sort of makes it about him and then his environment as opposed to the ratio being more about him and his environment and how he's interacting with it and you're always playing with that ratio if you're doing something like photography you're always playing with that ratio in many ways if you're doing any sort of visual art i suppose the balance between the environment that the person is a part of which is part of who they are interestingly enough and them, the person. And I love to see how different photographers will balance that. I love to see how different videographers will balance that when they are filming 
a short film and for ex- uh, for example there you know it's a wood shop worker and you have a tight shot of the wood shop worker or you could do a medium range shot of the wood shop worker so you, shop worker so that you can see them and their wood shop provides more context or you could go way back right the guy's building a thing he's building a table and he's the he's a tiny part of the overall scene visually that helps you tell the story and make the 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 his environment more of the story as opposed to if it was a uh you know a, a tighter shot on the person it becomes less of the story that's what's so interesting about shooting with like you know shooting a a semi tight shot is that you have this perfect balance a lot of times between the person the subject or whatever the subject is dog you know emu and their surroundings you can go either direction with that and i think that's so fascinating okay next shot uh we have a a girl walking with a purple hat you know the purple hat provides a level of bizarreness to this it's a it's a big purple hat you see the you see, it almost looks like he composited this together, and I suppose it's possible, but I think it's all organic. He just popped the flash. Uh, lots of motion blur going on in this photo. There, she, So she's walking, kind of looking at the camera. Uh, the camera is at a, a slightly Dutch angle. You have the famous bridge in Sydney. I forget exactly what it's called. In the background, you have a bay, looks like, shops on the right side. And once again, you have this dramatic contrast between the person in the frame and their environment. The environment in this case is very moody and uh, gray, and that's contrasted against the bright colors of her hat, her face, which is sort of like the why are you popping a flash off in my face kind of you know expression, which you see with a lot of photos and uh, another thing to talk about would be sort of the ethical part of popping a flash off in somebody's face when they're going about their day i'm not going to talk about that today Uh, but she has a blue flower dress on almost hawaiian-esque kind of vibe she's holding the hat on either side with her with her hands and um it just provides a level of bizarreness and intrigue and and uh aesthetic that I love, I think it's really interesting. And when you get a look like this from somebody's face, you really do get an authentic expression from them. What that person really feels, <laughs> what, how that person reacts to at a, at a split second, their hair trigger response to things in life. And I think that is the value of photography like this, even though a lot of people really do struggle with the idea of, of disturbing the people they're taking photos of, and that's a, something that you have to, to wrestle with if you're going to do this type of photography. But the value is it does have a photojournalistic quality to it because you're taking photos of, of people in a moment where they're not quite suspecting it yet. They're, you're capturing a very authentic moment from them. I think there is value to that. And of course you can do that without popping a flash off in somebody's face, but it's just uniquely done in this case. Okay, so we have another shot, lots of motion blur in this shot. We have in the background a a skyline, uh, downtown Sydney, 2018, as it says. You have closer to us in the the middle ground range, you have uh, some, what, I guess that's a bay as well. It's hard to tell. It's very motion blurred. But in the foreground, you have a person. All of his photos tend to have this uh, repeating quality of having a person on one third or the other, maybe in the middle. But they're kind of at the same distance from the camera every time. So he has this repetition that I think is good for his feed, for one. But it, it also ties his work together in a really interesting way which is good for his feet, so those are kind of the same thing. But we have somebody in a, I guess, a rain jacket. It looks like, almost like one of the space blankets in this case. Uh, their face is almost, I struggle to explain this, their face is 
only partially being shown because the top, because the hood of it is covering most of their face. It's super bizarre and crazy looking. Uh, all the motion blur in this case drags the lights in the background. Kind of looks like when you would have uh, Christmas with your family and they would do a home video recording and you would see the lights on the Christmas trees kind of streak in the background, sort of like that. I've always been intrigued by that look. Uh, the subject is also blurring as well. So there, there must have been a lot of motion flying around here. I would be interested to see how Bryce takes what it looks like when he's taking these photos. I'm sure it's pretty frantic looking. I'm sure there's a lot of movement. I'm sure he's in and out. He's capturing a split second. And I love that he's not scared to seemingly throw the camera around for his shot. I think that's fascinating and unique and uh, it takes a lot of creative bravery that a lot of people would be scared to embark upon. But yeah, it's, it's, it's just beautifully bizarre, this shot. Okay, moving on. Uh, let's see. We have a picture of a guy with... Uh, l there's a lot less context in the background here or anywhere in the environment. You sort of have this yellow streak running through the shot. Use your imagination. You have this yellow blurred streak running through the shot. Very, uh, hmm, what's the word? Um, it's like something if you got into, it's like almost light leaks, right? It's if you hopped into Photoshop and started grabbing different elements from different photos, like light leaks and start blurring things and moving things around, it has that sort of quality to it. It has a very composited, composited quality to it, but I believe it's all organic, which is very fascinating. But anyway, we have a subject who is, looks like he's stuck in a bag. <laughs> I guess he was going about his day, putting on his, maybe it was rainy, he was putting on this thing to keep him dry, and he's in the middle of that. He, uh, the bag's covering his head. Now, okay, what, what's the value of a photo like this? I think it makes you question things about life. It makes you think about what we do on a daily basis, what we do as humans, the weird things that we we do when we're when we're going about our our daily uh, rituals and such. Uh, I don't know. You could go all sorts of different directions in your mind. You know, wasting time putting a bag on your head. It makes you think, and I think that that's a good starting point for the value of what's going on here. Obviously, you could endlessly uh, ponder and speak about what this means, what it can mean. I think a lot of people might miss that, but I think it's important to have an inquiring and a curious mind when it comes to these types of photos and not sort of reject them just because they're bizarre. I think there's a lot of depth in them that you can easily miss. This one's very interesting. So this one looks like, it, oh, so it's Sh Shiboya? Okay, that's uh, the city it was taken in. And we have a picture of a woman standing in this city scene, everybody walking around behind her, crossing the streets, uh, tall buildings, and she's standing there with face paint on, uh, bright white face paint, red dots on her face, black eye, like eyeliner around her eyes with like dripping down. So, you know... A very eclectic individual, a very expressive individual. She has uh, red, reddish lipstick on, sort of bleeding off of her lip a little bit. And she has this, this dramatic, almost horrifying look on her face. I think probably because she was not expecting to have her photo taken, and so it generated this. It wasn't her smiling and going... I'm sure a second later with a, with a person like this, as much experience as I've had on the street taking photos of people... I'm sure that a second later, she probably would have given an expression that was created by her, right, and expressed. Uh, in this case, it was not created. It was just, it was responded. It was a response to her environment. And once again, that's an interesting thing that you can get from this style of photography. But the only thing that's really bright in this photo, and maybe he did some post-processing to accentuate this, is her face. Everything else bleeds or hmm, gradients into darkness. It's 
it's a really interesting style. It doesn't feel intense. It feels very organic. And so I want, that's why I wonder how much of it was actually organic and how much of it was digital manipulation. But it's fascinating. It's well done. And th these are, this is an example of technical nuances that make, that set him apart from other people. Uh, we have another shot of somebody walking in a city that there's a crosswalk behind her. She has a red shirt on, white stripe. He has a, he has an eye. Let me finish explaining this. Sorry. He had red shirt on, white stripe. Uh, and the bottom half of her wardrobe is black, but just this very vibrant red that, that really punches the brightest color in the frame. That red also is mirrored in her, or replicated in her lipstick, which is very red as well. She has a visor on covering the top half of her face. Very interesting composition, cutting off the top of her head a little bit. She's in mid-stride. She, um, so she's, she's, just finished crossing this crosswalk, and it looks like, once again, a flash popped off, and um, it feels very beautifully composed. It feels very well thought out, but also very quick, <laughs> very intense. And the intensity of that is naturally created by the fact that everything's moving very quickly, and he's shooting sort of from the hip, not literally, but me metaphorically speaking, shooting from the hip adds a level of drama and intensity to this photo that I think, and to all of his work, that I think is so interesting. And all of his work feels so organic because of this. It doesn't feel like, it doesn't feel like it was sort of contrived. It feels like all of these things are happening, and as they're happening, he's utilizing all of the, the weird rawness that's going on. And I think that's fascinating. I think that creators could do a bit more of that a lot of times uh, and make their style more unique and intriguing. But I forget what I was going to say after that. Anyway, um, so, I, you know, I, as we scroll through, I mean, I think I've kind of covered the gist of what you see replicated. We could, we could look at endless amounts of photos, uh, lots of looks of people being slightly irritated. <laughs> uh, we have... Lots of bizarre stuff. This person's wearing a, a visor. Looks like he's one of those people. Like in Back to the Future, when they were showing off what they felt like the future would look like, the way that those people were dressed. That's kind of what you see here. Uh, it's he has this weird visor on his face, purpley, orange, green light reflecting off cityscape in the background. Once again, same idea. Uh, the background is very much darker, but because the light is popping off into his face and onto his red scarf, and the blue contrasts with the red really well. I mean, it's just this stuff is really thoughtful when you dig into it. I think a lot of people are put off by this style, but this stuff is so thoughtful when you when you think about what's going on, you uh, sort of analyze it. There's a subconscious response that could go different ways, but uh, but. I think if you take a moment to you know look at it, it's it's beautiful. It's it's really interesting, and I love that this person has the ability with this hmm, not so uh, trendy kind of well trendy in the street photography realm, but a lot of a lot of people might not understand it to be seen by people who do understand it and build a niche audience around that. I think that's so fantastic. <laughs> Photo of a guy walking down the street with a gen I, it's what's fun about explaining these is i have no idea what some of what's happening in some of these uh this guy's wearing a he's wearing a giant looks like toilet paper-esque dress thing it's like fluffy his head's popping out the top he's walking down the street in sydney uh he has brown shoes on he i think he's carrying the this thing but it looks kind of like he's wearing it and it's just super intense and weird and bizarre, but so beautiful at the same time. Yeah. Okay, well, you know, I think that's a good place to wrap up. I think we did a nice little coverage. He, he also is willing to just b take a flash and blow out the exposure like crazy on the, on the subject in the foreground. Like he has a shot of a bird, and the bird is, all of the highlights on the bird are completely blown out. And the the it's standing on a green fence, and in the background you see the Sydney Harbor. 
uh, much darker, much more moody. Uh, the day was probably not this moody feeling, even though the clouds were there. It was, it was, you know, probably a, a, a more overcast day, maybe rainy day, perhaps. But he accentuated it with this style and turned it into something that has a completely different dynamic to it, <clears throat> and all done in an organic way. Anyway, Bryce's work is absolutely fantastic. Okay, I think that's it. I think one of the things that his work inspires me to do is think more dynamically in different directions. Get yourself out of out of your normal box a little bit. Create a new box that has more entropy in it, has more options of, of directions that you can go, things that you allow to happen. It's easy if you're a photographer or if you're an artist of any sort that involves creating visual things to stay in a pocket that you get used to and stick with the technical uh, rules that are supposed to be followed in your head for some reason. When you look at work like this, there's so many things that are happening that are just completely broken and off and different but done so well that it forces your brain to allow for new opportunities. And I think that's one of the things that, that is so beautiful. Uh, but I, of course, I think the stories he's telling of people, normal people going about their day and how he's sort of romanticizing it in this this dramatic and in, intense, uh, non-normal way. Uh, and, and when I say non-normal, I sort of mean not the way that we normally perceive the world. It's a different version of the world. And when you see that, you think a little bit differently about things. It's beautiful. I would encourage you to check out his work. That's it for this one. I hope you have a lovely day. Goodbye.